Got a jam-packed show for you today here on Texans Today. I'm your host, Jeremy Chuggs. And coming up, could the Texans be interested in getting another cornerback into H-Town? There's one that's visiting today, another one that's rumored to be very interested in coming to the Texans. I'll break both those down in today's program. Also, a little mock draft roundup. Now that the Texans are out of the first round, there's a lot of people that are predicting who could fall to them at pick 42. I have a list of about five, six guys who could be there for the Texans at 42. That on the back half of today's episode. And at the very end of today's episode, I want to bring this back, a little off-season game. We like to do a little Texans trivia for you. My question to you, who had the first 100-yard receiving game in Texans franchise history? Let me know down in the comment section. I'll give you the answer at the end of the video. No cheating. Yes, you. I see you opening another tab right now. Stop it. Stop it. No, don't do it. Do not cheat. Go down there and give me your answer. Who do you think had the very first 100-yard receiving game in Texans franchise history? I'll let you know about that at the end of today's program. Now, first off, the guy who came in for a visit today, cornerback C.J. Henderson, was with the Panthers last season, coming in for a meeting with the Texans today. And not really inspiring numbers from Henderson these past four seasons. A former early round draft pick a top 10 pick for the jacksonville jaguars and really has not been able to get his footing i mean injured in 2020 2021 only played 12 games this past season only played 12 games and you know his best season was in 2022 seven pass breakups two interceptions and a full seasons of work but i don't see this as a guy who's a legitimate starter for the texans so that brings up the question why why sign another guy? Why sign a guy like C.J. Henderson if he's just going to be another depth piece for the Houston Texans? They already got Jeff Okuda. They have some guys that are coming back next season. They already signed a guy like Mike Ford in the defensive back room. Why bring in another guy who's not going to have a chance to be your starter opposite of Derek Stingley? That just really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. That's why I much rather prefer this next guy in Xavier Howard. He's reportedly very interested in joining the Houston Texans. And Nick Casario earlier this offseason even alluded to bringing in another corner that can start opposite of Derek Stingley. Xavier Howard, obviously a former Houstonian and Houstonian himself. This is what Nick Casario had to say earlier on this offseason. He said, there are a lot of good players out there in free agency, including some of our players, but we are going to have someone out there playing opposite Stingley. We will work through it over the next few weeks and see where we end up. Now, like I mentioned, they already signed a guy in Jeff Okuda who, okay, he has some potential, another top, former top 10 pick, but he really didn't play that well for the Atlanta Falcons last year. Ended up getting benched at one point during the season. So is he going to be the starter opposite of Derek Stingley? And I don't think C.J. Henderson has that opportunity either. That's why I really would like the Texans to go out and target Xavier Howard. Bring Howard home. Bring him back to H-Town. I mean, he maybe he's not what he once was as a top 10 corner in this league, but as a cornerback too, I think he's more than serviceable. I mean, look at these past four years. Obviously, we're not going to get 2020. We're not going to get 2021 Xavier Howard when he had a combined 15 interceptions, but still the past two seasons, 12 pass breakups, one interception in each of the past two years. I mean, Xavier Howard can still ball, and I think this would be a great fit in the D'Amico Ryan's defense. You get a guy in Xavier Howard who's opposite of Derek Stingley. Maybe he can guard the number two for other squads. And like I said, Xavier Howard has the interest to be a Texan. He wants to be a part of this team, and he believes in this team. This is what Xavier had to say after getting released by the Miami Dolphins earlier this offseason. I would love to do that. Back at home, the crib. I have Houston Rockets and the Texans tatted on me. It's a realistic option for me. They have a hell of a quarterback, and I love a defensive coach. I mean, there you have it right there. Xavier Howard, he believes in this team. He believes in C.J. Stroud and D'Amico Ryans. And I really love the culture fit of bringing in a guy who's been there, done that, had some skins on the wall in this league to kind of pair with a younger cornerback in Derek Stingley. And this is the main reason why you sign Xavier Howard. Because if you sign him, maybe you don't give him a ton of money. Maybe you give him a deal similar to what Kendall Fuller got from the Miami Dolphins. But when you sign Xavier Howard, that means when you go into the 2024 NFL draft, 
you don't have to target a corner. If they don't sign Xavier Howard or another top corner like a Stephon Gilmore or bring back Steven Nelson, you're going to have to target a corner with your first selection in the 2024 NFL draft. And I that's not how I want this team to draft. I'd much rather them take best player available, whoever's the best on the board, if that's a wide receiver, if that's a defensive lineman, a linebacker, a safety. I want them to take the best possible prospect at 42 rather than having to reach on a corner because they didn't sign one in NFL free agency. So if you're with me, if you want Xavier Howard to come to H-Town, I need you to do two things right now. One, go spam X down in the comment section. I know some of these players watch our videos and if Xavier Howard happens to come by this video, I would really like him to see the support down in the comment section. So go down there, spam X, X going to give it to you, going to give it to you. Go down there and spam it. And number two, I'm going to put the link to my Twitter at Jeremy Chugs in the comment section. And I'm going to make a pinned tweet tagging Xavier Howard, telling him H-Town wants you here. We want you to come home. Bring Howard home, baby. Go there, retweet, comment on my pinned tweet. The more traction that tweet gets, the more action it gets, the more Xavier Howard sees that and says, you know what? These Texans fans really want me. I want to go to H-Town. If you could help me out with those two things, I'm trying to get Xavier to Houston. So I need your help. Go down and spam X and retweet and comment my pinned tweet at Jeremy Chugs. And coming up in just a moment, going from free agency, now we're transitioning to the draft. Now that the Texans traded out of the first round, we're going to look at some top guys there at pick 42, a little mock draft roundup from different sources on the internet. So that's coming up in just a moment, but I wouldn't be able to do today's show if it wasn't for our awesome sponsors over at Fanatics. And I know the Texans are getting new jerseys as soon as that comes out. As soon as I get the links for that, I'm going to be hooking y'all up with the brand new Texans gear. But if you're, I mean, summer months, it's a little sunny outside. If you want a Texans hat, we got you covered there. Go to chatsports.com slash Texans hat. And I know this next one is going to be a little, you know, you're like a beanie. Hey, I'm a savvy shopper. You get winter clothes in the spring and summer when they're on sale. Then when winter comes, you're like, hey, I had this hat and I didn't have to pay 60, 70 bucks for it. If you want to get some good deals, they have some good deals on some beanies, some winter wear, do it right now. I'm telling you, your, your future self is going to thank you for having that gear that you bought in the spring and the summer. Just go to chatsports.com slash Texans hat and get all of our great deals from our great friends over at Fanatics today. One more time, chatsports.com slash Texans hat. That'll be in the comment section and th the comments of today's video. Chatsports.com slash Texans hats. Hats. Got you covered. Now, a mock draft roundup for pick number 42 with the Houston Texans. Sliding back a little bit. They were at 23. Now they're at 42. Let's see what different people covering the Houston Texans are thinking is going to be there at 42 for the Houston Texans in the 2024 NFL Draft. First up, PFF and HoustonTexans.com said TJ Tampa. That's who they have the Texans selecting in their latest mock draft at 42. I like Tampa, a long, lanky corner, three tackle for loss, two interceptions, seven pass breakups this past season. But I really like the length, 6'2", 200 pounds, a really good frame there. If he's able to, or if Tampa is able to fall to 42, which there is a good possibility because wide receiver, cornerback, very, very deep in this draft. Good possibility that Tampa's there at 42. I would love the Texans to select him if he is. Next up, the draft scout had the Texans taking, I already talked about cornerback being deep, so is wide receiver. They have the Texans taking Keon Coleman, who, you know, his draft stock dipped a little bit at the combine, wasn't the best performer, but I don't think this is a guy that, you know, you're going to look at his 40 time. You're going to look at his, you know, three cone drill and be like, oh, he can't, he can't ball. If you watch the tape, if you watch any Florida State football this past season, you know Keon Coleman can, in fact, ball. Has a great catch radius. I wouldn't mind the Texans taking a shot at a top wide receiver at 42 if the opportunity presents itself. Speaking of Florida State, another guy out of Florida State, maybe my darling of the draft that I really hope falls to 42 for the Houston Texans, and that is Braden Fisk. Had a really, really good 22, uh, 2022 campaign. 2023, a little bit of a dip, still played really well. 43 tackles, nine tackles for loss, six sacks. But he is a big boy. Maybe he can build, build up his frame a little bit more if we want him to play nose tackle. But he could really help on the interior of that defensive line. I would love if Braden Fisk was there. Walter Football went with another big boy in, I know this is a lot of y'all's favorite, Tavondre Sweat out of the University of Texas, 6'4", 360 pounds. 
45 tackles, eight tackles for loss, two sacks last season with the Longhorns. Sweat is a big bodied guy who's just going to eat up blocks in the middle. Uh, I would really love Sweat being there at 42, but I'm a little hesitant to take him. I know, I know this is going to be unpopular opinion, but with a guy of that size and stature, really what worries me is his ability to stay on the field. Is he going to be able to be there on third down? Is he going to be able to stay in the game long enough to make an impact? If he doesn't have that stamina, if he doesn't have that endurance to play an entire football game, that's what worries me, the conditioning of a guy that's 6'4", 362 pounds. Now, Walter Football actually came out with another mock draft from one of their other writers, and they had the Texans selecting Michael Hall Jr., which is a little bit of a you know popular pick nowadays now that cj stroud went to ohio state's pro day and has been gassing up all their players including michael hall marvin harrison and tommy eichenberg all those guys cj stroud is given the green light for the texans because he he's their boy you know that, that that's his guys right there from ohio state but michael hall would be an intriguing option there at 42 i still think it's a little bit of a reach at 42 for michael hall i think he would be there at the texans next selection at 59 but a okay past season at ohio state 24 tackles two tackles for loss one and a half sacks a little bit of a smaller guy too 62 only 280 he's going to need to put on some pounds if he's going to be able to play nose tackle for the texans but he's a popular pick because obviously he went to Ohio State. Now, he's one of those sneaky names that I haven't really talked about as much. And I see a lot of y'all in the comment section being like, why don't you talk about this guy? Why don't you talk about this guy? Well, this is your opportunity to let me know about this guy. Name a prospect that we should focus on more before the draft. Let me know down in the comment section. Is it a guy that we can get in the second round? Maybe it's a sleeper. Maybe it's a guy who the Texans need to target later on in the draft. Let me know in the comment section a prospect, maybe one of your favorite guys that we should focus on just a little bit more. Now, some more mock draft roundup for the Texans at pick 42. Lad McConkey, which wild name, Lad, for a, for a grown adult, maybe, maybe it's just me, Lad, Kind of crazy name, but McConkey did ball out this past season for the Georgia Bulldogs. 30 receptions, 478 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, the numbers don't absolutely jump off the page, but when you watch film, he's a very shifty wide receiver. The only problem with McConkey is he's not going to really get any jump balls. He's not going to jump over defensive backs and make spectacular plays. He's a good route runner, a shifty guy, more of a slot guy, which I don't know if the Texans necessarily need that. They already have a really shifty guy in Tank Dell. So I think he fits around that same mold, but McConkie would be an okay option. I would wait until round three, honestly, if the Texans were to draft a guy like Lad McConkie or this next guy, Roman Wilson, coming from Roto World. They have the Texans selecting Roman Wilson at pick 42. Not a bad receiver whatsoever i mean if this receiver class wasn't so deep i think roman wilson would be a lock to go in round two but because it is so deep i don't think you need to reach for him at a pick 42 roman wilson a good receiver for the national champion michigan wolverines last season 48 receptions 789 yards uh yards 12 touchdowns i mean he was able to find the end zone last season for the wolverines but at pick 42 and it not being a major need. I can't imagine Roman Wilson being the best player available on the Texans board there at 42. That's why I don't necessarily agree with this selection. Now, that's all I have for you for you on today's video, but, oh, thanks for reminding me, producer Sam on the ones and twos. Before we go, I gotta give you the answer for our trivia question of the day, and before we pop it up, actually, before we pop it up, let's give them one more chance to answer it. The question was, who had the Texans very first 100 yard receiving game in their franchise history it's okay sam we got we got it we got to cover we got to cover who had the first 100 yard receiving game in texans history the answer is Corey bradford the inaugural season 2002 week six versus the buffalo bills he almost got there two times prior to this having 97 yards 99 yards in a couple games prior to this week six matchup against the buffalo bills but the answer is Corey Bradford. I do remember Corey Bradford just from NFL Street playing with the Houston Texans. He was always one of the wide receivers that was available for me for the Texans. But just a little fun trivia question to get our Texans knowledge flowing. Something that you can maybe ask one of your Texans friends back. Hey, do you know who was the first Texans wide receiver to get 100 yards? 
You don't? Of course I do, because I subscribe to Texans Today. That's why I know those things, and you should subscribe if you haven't already for daily Texans videos all year long through free agency and the 2024 NFL Draft. Every single thing that happens with this franchise, I'm going to bring you a video for it. The latest news and rumors, 100% free. If you haven't already, go down and hit that sub button and join the fastest growing Texans channel on YouTube.